so I have this document, but um, I'm going to actually go to the very last page and uh, start with it. So um, this is to say, um, starting right off of that, Marxism, so capitalism in a non-alignment. So that's um, Marxism, capitalism, and India's future, which is dated to be 1941 is the reference I'm making. A resource I recommend would be the 10th of November Sticks. It's a very short story. I've actually found it on YouTube, read out loud, but you can go through the whole book. My, my point that I'm making would be, um, that would be a really good source um, for context. Um, but Soviet Russia's success or failure, vastly important as it was as practical of an experiment in establishing a communist state, did not affect the sounds of the theory of communism. So the Bolsheviks may blunder or even fail because of the national or international reasons. And um, yet the communist theory may be correct. So from Toward Freedom, the auto autobiography of Jawaharla, Nibiru, New York, John Day um, Co. So this is also taking place in 1941 and the page I'm specifically um, referencing would be 228 to 231. And this is um, to say uh, economic development and non-alignment. We completed out first five year plan eight months ago um, and now country and between factor and factor and a small scale in the cottage production. I speak of India because it is my country and I have some story from Asia today is a resurgent and these countries which long lay under foreign yoke have won back their independence and are fired by a new spirit and strive toward new ideas. So to them, as to us, independence is, a vi is as vital as the breath they take to sustain life and colonialism and in any form or anywhere or um, is adherent. So only thus can true freedom flourish and a people grow according to their own genius. We believe therefore uh, in non-aggression and in non-interference by one country in an affairs of another and a growth of tolerance between them and the capacity for peaceful coexistence. We think that by the free change of ideas and the trade and other co contracts between nations, each will turn from the other and truth will prevail. We therefore endeavor to maintain friendly relations with the countries, even though we may disagree with them in their policies or structures of government. government. We think that by this approach, we can serve not only our country, but also the dangers, the danger causes of peace and good fellowship in the world. So from a speech in Washington, D.C., December 18th, um, 1956, printed in the U.S. Department of State Bulletin. Um, let me backtrack one more page um, because there's also... Um, Another uh, document I wanted to read. So I got through that one, but this is actually the one I was hoping to reference really quick. Um, okay, and it is here. Okay, so um, I'll get to this at the, at the end and we'll kind of make it all make sense. So how has Walmart affected other businesses, right? So um, we all know what Walmart is um, and what I'm getting at is um, the system, the update that um, Walmart took on as a, um, as a caste system within their employees um, because a lot of the health, medical health care reform addresses like these concepts and innately is it is like a conversation to be had with maybe an employee directly i i was fortunate enough to do so i was just in an uber and someone had on like a shower cap and was kind of talking to me about this brain surgery they had the day before and um i'm in route to the airport so i mean they really just kind of opened up i wasn't like assuming um, or 
constructing, like forcing the conversation to happen, they just kind of had it with me. Um, but the point being that they had this brain tumor and they had been an employee um, for Walmart and uh, healthcare benefits changed once they updated the system to be that it only pertains to the upper management class. Um, so it's despite how long you've been working there, which wasn't the case before, um, their benefits um, were modified to not cover things like that. So immediately having to take on this other role with Uber to have the surgery covered with their insurance. Um, so it was kind of sad, but also kind of like, I mean, before it was like a positive experience with the doctors and the medical benefits and stuff like that. And it wasn't just overhead and the mobility of getting promoted was different. You were more likely to get promoted if you had been with the company for X amount of time. Um, that was no longer the case. It's that you get hired on for that position, not that you're going to have uh, someone develop you. That's not how it's going to work anymore. Um, so they have a lot of internal management that were initially maybe cashiers or like guest relations. And then it's this transitional period. So it's kind of like ju like this juxtaposition to kind of reiterate and echo the themes of what I had been talking about. So um, there are global finances, German finances, the speed of economic capitalists and the economic sector of World War II destroyed many of the Western Europe and Japan to rebuild these economies based on the American capitalist model, the monetary fund by uh, IMF, a lot of this was built by the US dollar and the one number currency in the world. And the investment in Europe by the US government and the euro currency system, the dollars that are coming in as good as gold. These bankers now can make loans and despite being German marks, are used for industrial reconstruction backed by the U.S. dollar. The bank system is made possible by the U.S. dollar funds um, and is Walmart good for the world. Um, so that was kind of something to put on the back burner as I had this conversation because I really, I mean, it like struck a, like a chord with me. So um, I just want to kind of bring that up and then let's keep going. Um, Maybe you guys can mull it, mull it over or come up with other examples, better examples, um, more relevant examples in this conversation. But um, it would be that we are trying to compare and contrast maybe the causes, the goals and effects of the English, the French, the Japanese revolutions, NATO while westernizing Europe and Japan create a martial plan to help build the Japanese economy economy in order to disdain the monopolized mass factory system of production that is large, largely dependent on the foreign investments from the world economy establishing the IMF and uh, world banks to finance the world economy that depends heavily on foreign trade to eliminate the communist business model that Castro has overtaken his own economy and establishing rule for the U.S. as the only superpower. And um, with this modern system, a system of consumerism business model, leaving Great Britain and Japan unable to compete under the hallmark of communalism rather than individualism in the context of a socialist approach to the economy in order to avoid a total collapse and provide a resurgence of the agricultural industry more efficient. A demand is created for an internal rebuild of the economy by the technocrats, Chicago boys, trained accountants in an age of modernization. So in case you missed that before, that is what I'm referring to. The, um, so this modernization of supply and demand within the world free market. And again, the Chicago boys are technocrats, technocrats um, inferring that um, they are trained accountants in an age of modernization. So it is not a made up um, position in the world. It is a position that was created after this currency, this transition into modernity. Um, so a gap is a uh, bridge from the agricultural exchanges trained in the economic philosophy under the Catholic University, the University of Chicago, and the Albion um, Petter, Petter Sonas of, of efforts of 
U.S. territorial reform and the political system alliance for pro progress through the disbursement within the sec sectors and foreign loans. Rather, um, relying heavily on the demand of buying in to the American dream, circulating through international consumerism markets in America, as American banks and uh, the price of oil were rising and receiving a huge amount of money for the oil that they were exporting. So large banks receive this profit and are um, to reinvest the company's money in Latin America. So Europe international systems are exploding in the rest of the market banking, retail stores, and the outsourcing of assembly in order to make commerce more affordable through push-pull production. Much has to do with these ideals, the individual fulfillment of happiness or for happiness, the globalized world. So this is a story of um, most have failed and are committed to the influence of keeping these importing substances institutions limited out. So um, these are actual points in which the book has kind of like broken up this um, information that I'm kind of referencing. Um, so it's 1980s, the world is transformed as countries open their economies to trade policies, ideas, Western culture that has been consistent since um, um, our own for our own sake and they sought God um, thus as a great creation so all the same it is stretching out the imagination too far to see through correspondence between the mechanical universe of the 17th century philosophers and the bourgeoisie desire for rational predictable orders um, I'll read that again so God being this great creator who has they have sought out God who has um, this accreditation for great creation. All the same, it is stretching the imagination too far to see a rough correspondence. So this term of like a line of communication between the mechanical world, um, this industrialized new modernization that they've created, this universe that they've um, instilled to restructure their governments. Um, in the 17th century, these philosophers start to say um, is juxtaposed, and that is what they're starting to wake up to, this juxtaposition with the bourgeoisie's um, desire for rational, predictable order. So science and business were a two-way street. It is um, how they basically brought it to light. If science affected business, so did business affect science, but its business-like temper and its quantitative thinking by its interest in matter and their rational control of matter. So this um, is a different book. Uh, it's called Global History Reader. I definitely encourage you to read this book as well if you are um, in the dark or confused about something or not really um, feeling like what is it that like historically speaking would be like um, relevant to include in an update in regards to a pandemic specifically or like maybe you do feel like really comfortable with that and it hasn't bothered you um, and you're just kind of bored but it's still going on so I mean it's like there it's available to you I definitely encourage and recommend that one so at this time in history it is important to note as the text mentions, that other cultural enlightenments were taking place in small meccas throughout Eastern Europe, hubs for technology or technological and aerocratic movements that were shaping the interaction amongst the ruler class um, of peasants, given the chance to articulate themselves through apprenticeships and developments of intellectual thought, literary works, the origins of modern science, Professor Butterfeld of Cambridge writers um, that the scientific revolution, or writes rather, that um, the scientific revolution of the 16th and 17th centuries outshines every science, ever, everything since the rise of Christianity and reduces the Renaissance and Reformation to the rank of mere episodes more internal displacements within the system of the medieval Christ Christian done 
It looms so large as the real origin both of the modern world and of the modern mentality that our customary periodization of European history became an anachronism and an encumbrance. This view can no longer be seriously questioned. The scientific achievements of the century and a half, and between the publication of Copernicus de Revolution Bus Aurovianum uh, Celestium and Newton's Principia, uh, Mark, and that would be dated the first one, um, 1543, and Newton's Principia, uh, 1687. So this marked the opening of a new period of intellectual and cultural life in the West, which I shall call, which I shall call um, the Age of Science. So what chiefly distinguishes this age from its predecessor was um, that science, manning by science a body of knowledge, a method, an attributed attribution um, of mind, a metaphysic to be described basically here below. So beca this became the directive force of Western civilization, displacing theology and antique letters. So science made the world of the spirit of platonic ideas seem unreliable and dim by comparison with the material world. So the source that I'm referencing would be Franklin Levon Fromm, The science, Scientific Revolution in the West, reprinted from main currents of Western thought, the fourth edition and edited by Franklin Levon Brom. Uh, this would be 1978 by uh, permission of Columbia University's press. So as previously mentioned, as previously mentioned, much like India, Europe's history, at least after the collapse of Rome's Western Europe empire in the 8th, 8th, century, 8th century of the contemporary era was one in the political fragmentation. The regions was marked by a crazy guilt of kingdoms and principalities, duchies, um, etc., a strong Centralized rule would not emerge in most Europe until after the 12th century. This is page 64 in the previous book that I was using and uh, sourcing um, a lot of the quotes from to support the writing, which is themes in global history. I know that I lost sight of the title because there are variations, but this is um, confirmed to be themes in global history. Um, through enlightenment, classism, and naturalists, um, which began to attempt their take on storytelling through artwork depictions that um, the reestablishment of the kin groups in the agricultural rural areas that have reestablished their housing sex and the monarchical system of governance that reemerges as the trading empires make all the sea routes across the southern East Asian routes to their colonial superpowers in order to stimulate rapid economic growth in the world economy. The tools of the agricultural development further to include music and cultural exchanges for the millions that claim membership in a kin group that develop in the European social system of governance that further establishes the nobility from um, the ruler peasantry in the caste system. So uh, a much harsher depiction of the new Renaissance is uh, deceived into getting uh, the book, The Prince, um, and that would be a literary, a literary reference in Machiavelli's written um, during this pivotal economic shift in the world market, detailing the harsh reality of the peasantry class as previously mentioned in our text during the Reformation that would allow them to throw off the continuing uh, inference of the papacy, the religious reform, which continues to revolt against the Church of England. And um, we can reiterate that a different way if you need to, uh, but I'll let that be up to you. This cultural revolution um, 
of land acquiring through the peasantry was common nationalist protest um, to the state during an era of refinement that brought about global economic and sociological change to the world industry and re revolutionized the terms of governing throughout the continent. So this mirrored effect of this movement's um, movement are commonly known as the age of science made the intoxicating discovery that Melioration depends not upon change from within. So this is a direct quote from St. Paul's Birth of the New Man, but upon change from without. So this is a, the scientific and social mechanics. Game, animals, and birds, and of hunting gear is evident of the 17th century passion for that hunt, and it's an important place in aerocratic lifestyle. The peasants that are creating this interpretation of the economic shifts that have been enforced in the rural or outskirts of the country focus on the aerocratic development through the men that have text emphasizes as leaders in the revolt much like in france bacon and czech uh john amos comenius who denounces the traditional education for its exclusive emphasis upon words rather than things Okay, so that's the contrast and the juxtaposition to uh, note liter uh, literature rather than nature itself. Um, present persistently explains the juxtaposition of the material world and the pivotal role um, textiles that begin to play into the peasantry through the modern nobility and its lineage through um, out the society that has crossed the foothold of modernity into uh, the global platform that is known to be established in the areas formerly excluded from the world market of trade and the modern technologies heavily dependent on the steamboat and the printing press. So do you see how that's uh, not gonna be true for everyone? So as previously discussed, later centuries saw European families shaped by classical Greek and Roman, Sussex, and then German traditions or groups, society consisted of two sorts those who possess property and those who labor to make the property productive. So landlords and peasant families were mutually responsible for each other's actions and were contractually bound to each other by elaborate duties and responsibilities. So this is page 76, themes in global history. And if you want to kind of tie it back to that Walmart reference, you kind of see why the, there's a system and the company continues to profit, it's not necessarily that the employees become millionaires. Like the wealth and success of the system or the wealth and success of Walmart is not connected or dependent or a variable of the success and the like preservation of the employees. There is an overhead and the overhead does reap a lot of the benefits and those people are probably um, structured to be successful after or you know in general but it wouldn't be a catch-all phrase or idea or concept for the entire company so when we're talking about yeah, I'm sorry I don't actually have the paper right in front of me where I asked the question which is that um is Walmart good for America, right? So this rock bottom price to sell consumer goods, the top 10 Christmas toys is another um, reference. What benefits do they provide? Toddling their employees work at these um, low cost meccas, kind of like, right? Is that kind of making sense? Is Walmart unfairly attacked by criticisms? I mean, is that like fair to say? Cause they are really like, super successful. I mean, everybody knows who they are. Are there shifts in three hours in the morning and again in the evening with little opportunity to having a living, uh, to having lived in the time in between? The ability of having a part-time job does not allow for a middle shift without affecting other businesses in their town. Most businesses encouraging child labor, textiles and the production of garments produced by children. So that's like we're seeing the company and kind of dissecting it as like a whole, not just out in Pearland or out in uh, Bastrop, like 
or talking about it um, it as a whole. Okay, so I'm not actually seeing the paper that I read before, but um, this is a little bit more about it. Um, so what I think I said specifically was how has it affected other businesses? Um, but I am basically saying also, is it good for the world? So you kind of have to really, I mean, there's a lot there, but I think you get, um, you get where I'm going. So we'll get to that. Um, I have it all there, um, but you do see where, um, that's my example that I think make, makes it make sense um, because sometimes describing it doesn't really speak to uh, an audience who hasn't read a book. Um, I do really encourage you to read the book and then maybe you can find an example that's like gonna make it make sense to you. But um, the neighboring apprentices um, or um, in a conversation with medical reforms, I just know that that took place during the pandemic. So um, the neighboring apprentices eventually by the end of the 17th century begins to recognize the prejudice against the mechanical studies as belonging to practical rather than high mental life that had all but disappeared. So this dependency again um, from a man or um, a collection of employees to another like landowner is sort of not exactly the same thing as you know an overhead member of Walmart being female but you do understand like that takes place and the people who are having the situation where they're um, dealing with uh, you know an emergency removal of a tumor um, and then picking up Uber the next day happens. So um, the uh, neighboring apprentices eventually by the end of the 17th century began to recognize the prejudice against mechanical studies as belonging to practical rather than high, high mental life had all but disappeared. So Bacon complained in 1605 that matters mechan mechanical were esteemed a kind of dishonor unto learning to descend to inquire or meditation upon. But Royal Society included its roster, a number of um, ecclesiastics and men of fashion. So the second Marquis of Worcestershire maintained a laboratory and published a book of inventions in 1663. Not a few men appear to have been, quote, converted to have carried the gospel unto the byways with all the zest of the early Christian missionaries, which began to go bankrupt during this brief period of time that was reluctant to depend on the English Reformation of conducting affairs through the church and implementing the doctrine for means of bias in the majority of the populations of lifestyles. As most discussed in the text of means, uh, most discussed in the text of taxation within the land system of distribution, as well as the extent of students' etiquette and members of the middle class's ability to provide for themselves, the creation of rapid economic growth was heavily dependent on the structure of government and the emphasis of simplicity in everyday life and began to gravitate towards the concrete developments in science as a result of disease and in its understanding with the global elite scholars. So um, everybody knows what bias is, right? So um, we don't have to get into that. If you don't, I would encourage you to look it up. To account historically for the scientific revolution is no easy task. The problem becomes somewhat more manageable. However, if we exclude from the discussion the specific discoveries of the scientists, um, so only the internal history of science can explain how Harvey, for example, discovered the circulation of blood or Newton, the universal law of gravitation, right? Um, so, but uh, certain extra scientific factors were plainly instrumental in causing so many people to simultaneously uh, be interested in nature, quote unquote, and moreover to think about nature in the way that they did, right? So that transition is happening. 
Um, and this is from the original book that I was um, trying to introduce you to um, from this packet, which is the Global History Reader, um, and this would be page 205. Again, it's Global History Reader. In simplest terms, the text explains the movements of enlightenment to the beginning to exclude the Impressionists. James McNeil Whistler, English famous for his work in 1869 and an artisan beginning to craft the famous armchair, a furniture piece that was seen as a feat of modernity in the urban middle class, the everyday life of about 1885 designed by Arthur Hagate McMurdo from English Rule. And this is between um, date range 1851-1942, made his way through the commerce funded by the E. Goodall and Company, Manchester, again of England rule. This piece, um, considered upholstery um, by E. Goodall and Company, Manchester, again of England rule. This piece, considered, uh, excuse me, upholstery was designed by Aether P. Home. English between date range 1864 to 1916 and was made by Simpson and Goldler, English active um, about 1884 from the common materials like the satin one and brass, which the text describes to be part of the nobility but kept in circulation with the caste system of the time and assembled through the basic scientific practices at the time. The issue then begins to emerge within the foreign diseases that are bred in these hubs of moisture and decay that the middle class is not accustomed to harboring. With much of the original upholstery printed cotton using inks and dyes from overseas, it is um, precisely too easy to announce analyze and consider it for a tool of development during this brief period of time in history. Themes like drama and naturalism in the 17th century Italy and Spain, Rome specifically center for patronage, patronage of Roman Catholic Church and a repository of great antique and Renaissance monuments attracted painters and sculptors from Italian cities and from throughout the European artists completed for um, prestige co uh, commissions for altarpieces, which were publicly displayed in Rome. Rome's many churches. They also produced both secular and religious works for the galleries of private collectors, a market that encourages specialization in categories or genres of painting, such as still life and landscape. As previously discussed, medieval Christianity sponsored the Greek as opposed to the primitive idea of rationally trained Western intellectuals in exact thinking. So the Renaissance and the Protestant Reformation also prepared the grounds for the scientific revolution, not by design, but as an indirect consequence of their thinking. So the source um, is referencing specifically uh, page 208 of the same book, The Global History Reader. Most notably, a Marxist named Manx Nan Piano Fort around uh, 1897 becomes known for having designed work by, uh, by under Mackie, Hugh, Ballet, Scott, um, and an apprenticeship from material iconic uh, of the time in England and sold in London, which can be seen in Russian socialists as a decorative arts purchase made of oak, ebony, ivory, mother of pearl, and copper, which is discussed here because um, there seems no more possibility of making it elegant than there is of making it a household pet of an elephant. I thought that was really well written. Anyways, um, John F. Ronesi, man of the art journal, and this is to be specific of the date 1894, singularly used external text use for um, this use of development. This depiction of still life has grown to include areas of the world market, creating markets for thin, previously non-existent. Developments in Austria and the United States focus on designing crafts craftsmanship, one instance in particular having included the influence of Britain, which created uh, rooms that were total works of art. 
furniture fixtures. Um, so I say furniture fixtures, but the functionality of the pieces has been removed. So um, the wall decorations were all decisions to form a harmonious ensemble. How then could a standard commercial upright piano be made to blend in with a carefully planned drawing or music room? McKay, Hugh, Bali, Scott, as well as the designer Charles Robert Ashby, whose work is on view in order to further tell the stories of these newly formed households within the peasant class that included the presence of British nobility and urban city ports, considered systems of commerce and nearby, and trade, excuse me, nearby. The artist Edward Brown Jones to design upright, also known as cottage, pianos that complicated modern interior, right? So the overall design of the piano, like its keyboard, is a study in contra and is best explained in our reading as a product of modernity. This instance establishes an example of the reality faced by the British, as the British did not find these ports to be valuable. Plantation goods were later the persuasive factor to motivate Caribbean trade for the English to keep out of the French and the Spanish territories, with a constant threat described in our reader by the Chinese and Mughal Empire, which leads to the well-designed and enforced system of governance that gives rise to the regulations that ultimately are institutionalized through the educational reform to benefit the British and would also include the merger of the English in Austria and their influence of music into the technological tools developed during the period of time. This cultural movement is seen to be influential overseas. In China, in particular, the drastic and severity, servitude excuse me, of these practices take a new form in binding the influence of beautifying. In other words, what is in our past? And this is to be dated before 1400 uh, uh, CE, contemporary era CE, to the modern era, and which was marked by the evolution of disease. So the course of the pandemic and endemics, a wildfire of disease that spreads from state systems and the creation of created political entities and medical advancements is summed up to be the distance imperial system, which there was their increasing exploitation of long distance ocean routes. And this is a direct quote. So these trading empires undergo the climate change and trigger mass invasions by nomadic people into the more sediment sedimentary societies such as China. This leads to the creation of warrior states and eventually to the trade empires in order to monopolize the three most marginalized commodities of the time, silk, spices, and silver. So I'm going to um, read that one more time so that it's very clear and transparent to you because there's no reason for it to not be. Um, with this wildfire of disease that was spreading um, to the state systems because of the exchanges, right, and creating these political entities because we're moving into modernity, these medical advances because we've acknowledged the origin of science, right? So now, um, this is being summed up by the distance imperial system, which was their increasing exploitation of long distance ocean routes. And that's a direct quote. Distance imperial systems, which was increasing exploitation of long distance ocean routes. Remember what was the big takeaway before? That these people weren't making it to the next port. So there's not a scam system or a banking system that's like set up to like trap people's finances, but it is something that inevitably was um, interpreted as a vulnerability of these human, like humanistic properties in dealing with the disease. So the, it would be an element of that versus of the, the mutated strand or the treatment. So these trading empires undergo the climate change 
um, and the trigger of mass invasions by the nomadic people and to the more sedimentary societies such as China. This leads to the creation of warrior states and eventually to the trade empires in order to monopolize on the three most marginalized commodities at the time, silk, spices, and silver. So they're talking about strategy before in different contexts, but I think um, it wouldn't be a stretch of the imagination to infer that because they're suggesting there's a monopoly that they're trying to create, um, that there might have been um, attacks that they're admitting to taking place in the rural areas to expand and then into these areas of port cities. But I mean, that we can only go based off of what's on the paper. So um, what's here, I wouldn't argue with you that you're wrong to say it, but what's here is that it leads to the creation of warrior states and eventually to trade empires, right? So in order to monopolize on the three most marginalized commodities of the time, which were silk, we do know that to be true, spices, there's three major ones, and silver, okay? So um, in Japan, these goods are the ba basis for the idea that world economy was based on no infinite amount of material goods. So wealth accumulation meant, in effect, wealth deprivation for other societies. Each empire sought to hoard as much of the world's marketable resources, commonly crafted by artisans as previously emphasized by our text. So that's another direct reference to the text. Folding screens of scenes in and around Nara Coyote assembled during this time, illustrated by a pair of six panel screens. Okay, so um, with modern materials like ink, colors, and gold on paper, which began to fill the galleries throughout the empire and are seen as signs of nobility, without such religious novelty and begin to be sold to private vendors within the most recent century to American families like that of the Western Weston family here in Houston. The collection is housed through Rice University and um, collectively owned and uh, sponsored here in Houston. Common, commonly, these specialties become part of the collection um, and are on constant loan throughout the world, which is not common in the mentality of the day in which was constructed. As mentioned, this particular piece was um, drawn from date range 1860 to 1936, and it is entitled The Solitude of the Soul, one of my favorite pieces from the uh, an internship in which I personally had the privilege to research and analyze. It is modeled um, to be 1901, sculpted um, in 1914, and uh, today is notably seen for be being made of marble, in which it illustrates the neoclassicism of the sculptor Harriet Hosmere and uh, Randolph Rogers. So who was replaced in the second half of the 19th century? These centuries were replaced during the Red Scare and uh, conducted to do business in a secrecy. So often with two or more forms of discretionary measures to preserve the integrity of the artist and his work. Uh, again, as copyrights begin to emerge and government guidelines for common um, methodol uh, methodology of capitalism, all of these different types of revolutions. Trading empires establish themselves through their impact on the economy, society, and the political state of the governance in each port city and capability of perpetual increase of wealth. So uh, by this more realistic naturalism of French trained sculptors described um, the industrial revolution that begins to take place as a result of the accessibility of steel and its rapid transportation across seas, as mentioned in our text. The revolution takes place in Europe, not China. Are many of the same economic pre-industrial conditions existed. So China and its influence on the Western states is considered a temporary technological advantage that made possible the rise of colonial empires, which are the subject to the chapter five um, in the book. Um, the discussion on this pivotal economic shift is further exemplified through the works of the Dutch. 
the Indian subcontinent Africa, this is a direct quote from the book, Europe and the Americas. In addition, there is also a treatment of Islam that does not lend itself to the geographical and categorizing you categorizing used um, in organizing, and there's a dash there, in, uh, into organizing the Arabian Peninsula Islam, which, quote, soon spreads across North Africa, modern day Europe, or Egypt, excuse me, and Europe, across the Indian subcontinent and Central Asia, and even into the Indo-Asia Archipiatian Diego, um, yeah, that techni technical difference um, hardly would allow its exclusion from its group given the enormous impact of the Islamic faith both then and now. So um, the focus of broad outrages of society and hot, and they regulate themselves uh, they regulate themselves to share the material world around them, their forms of governance, now uh, how they function, their political and economic constructs, and the value systems were to emphasize the maintenance of balance. Between heaven, and this is another direct quote, between heaven and earth, a stress of accountability uh, that fed the imperial need for order, clipping a large complex society with a large and with uh, within the large and complex society. This in our text is known as a mandate of heaven, direct quote um, to what it's entitled. It goes on to describe the Song Dynasty, date range 960 CE which underwent an impressive growth during the maritime trade. As we previously discussed, the cultural production and exquisite porcelain uh, known for its invention of printing during this brief period of time and its emphasis of trades of subjects, traces of subjects that, which were satirical and common in the 1500s during Western invasions, which began in numbers Grave numbers and represented no immediate threat to the great imperial system, which our texts deem to be the greatest imperial system on the face of the world. So that's China, and uh, it remains to be the largest economy in the world um, well into eight, the eight, 18th century. So Europeans were having to uh, increase the impact on China's history and the impact of the Empire would uh, tie back to our previously review of the doctrine of man, a never ending topic that brings to focus the practices of Confucianism, Confucius, um, that express what heaven was conferred um, and called the nature. Um, and this is a direct quote in accordance with his nature, is a, called the path of duty, the regulation of this of this path is called instruction to balance and stability within the society. This path, our text describes as another quote, knowledge, magnanimity, magnanimity, and energy. These three are the virtues universally binding and means by which um, they carry the duties into practice, so commonly known as singularness this site of the wealth and power, so end quote, represented by the warrior state and the heavily reliant on the tributary system was often no more, and this is another quote, no more than a thin cover for trade in the force and mechanism merchants, um, forge in merchants. So this emphasis, Muslim uh, traders who were ambiguous along the Central Asia caravan routes and the Southern Seas uh, lanes often posed as envoys, another quote here, in order to engage in trade, most Chinese traditional um, traditionalists consider this engage in trade, most Chinese, oh, excuse me, so quote, in order to engage in trade, most Chin Chinese traditions considered this when they detected it, end quote, in this traditional domestic interior so Wilhelm treated the middle class, basically what I'm inferring is uh, as rather elegant, generalized types. Avians in 
Our texts are described as Indo-European, quote, pastoralists who migrate into northwestern quadrants of the subcontinent, date range about 1500 years before the contemporary era. It is easy to infer based on our text that this modern, uh, modern uh, dated date range again mid 18th century, which took place in Naples, Italy, includes famous artists commonly discussed in classrooms today. So, like the reemergence of Claude Monet, a French nobleman who became popularized date range during 1840 to 1926, his work Apples and Grapes answers the crime, which our text renounces as quote, one of the political fragmentations in the contemporary era and the own the collapse of Rome's Western Empire in the 8th century, quote. So um, the region was marked by a crazy string of kingdoms, principalities, duchies, um, duchies, excuse me, and a strong centralized rule, quote, which Claude Monet depicts through Impressionism that emerged during the 12th century when these themes finally being to be part of the characterization of society among the European empires. Monet um, probably painted this and other still lives during the 19th century, knowing that they would not be um, readily marketable, um, than more, more readily marketable than his landscapes. In Ape, Apples and Grapes, however, they employed the same complexity of color, light, and texture, and found in most Impressionist landscapes um, this particular evident in uh, the extensive cloth surface, uh, the play of light on the horizontal brush strokes, indicating the folds in the cloth, uh, tablecloth, um, suggesting water ripples in the sunlight. So uh, that intentionality with movement is there. European art, date range 15th to 18th century, begins the conver conversations with the French descent um, during date range 1787-1788 to establish classism in nature as previously discussed. So it's important to know um, that not to be included in this work solely for emphasis. Basically, um, works were painted by classics like the obelisk. Um, the painting is one of the four depictions of the agricultural fantasies that were commissioned by a bear Robert, um, excuse me, uh, Hubert Robert, commissioned by the Marquis de Laborde um, for his elegant courtesy estate uh, at Marivelle, south of Paris. So it features a grand, grandis, grandios, grandiose uh, vaulted space that frames an obelisk with a Paris style closing off um, the distance. So through years of study in Italy, Robert aborted the vocabulary of classical agriculture architecture and sculpture into his own imaginative language. Here the female figure in the central niche is based on the century, first century Roman sculptor um, that the artist would have seen during his stay. Once again, through years of study in Italy, Robert aborted the vocabulary of classical architecture and sculpture into his own imaginative language. Here, the female figure in the central niche is based on a first century Roman sculpture that the artist would have seen during his stay in Rome. So I'm gonna stop there because we're about to get to an hour and I don't know that I can go terribly past that with these videos.